Well, hey everybody, this is Robert and welcome to Outbreak News TV. And on this video, I want to take a look at some of the indirect consequences that are going to come out of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, and some of them are, are really quite drastic. And at first you would think I'm going to talk about the economy, but in this time I'm not going to, though the economy is massive, a massive, massive issue. But I'm going to look at some other um, indirect uh, effects of coronavirus on society and on the world, on health. And the first one I want to talk about is global mental health. And the title of this report says the coronavirus pandemic's impact on global mental health is, quote, already extremely concerning, close quote, according to the UN. There is a high prevalence of mental distress in countries across the globe due to the coronavirus pandemic, especially among healthcare workers and children, according to the UN and the WHO. The impact of the pandemic on people's mental health is already extremely concerning, according to WHO Director General Dr. Tedros in a news release last week. During the pandemic, 47% of healthcare workers in Canada have reported a need for psychological support. 50% of healthcare workers in the People's Republic of China reported depression. And 42% of healthcare workers in Pakistan reported moderate psychological distress and 26% severe psychological distress, according to a UN policy brief. In Italy and Spain, parents have reported that while in confinement during the pandemic, 77, 77% of the children have had difficulty concentrating, 39% have restlessness and irritability, 38% have nervousness, and 31% feelings of loneliness, according to the brief. Also, a study on the young people with a history of mental health needs living in the United Kingdom found that 32% of them reported that the pandemic had made their mental health much worse. So social isolation, fear of contagion, loss of family members is compounded by distress caused by loss of income and often employment, Tidro said. It is now crystal clear that mental health needs must be treated as a core element of our response to and the recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. So that's one problem, right? So we have mental health issues. People are worried about their jobs. They're worried about the, their um, bank accounts. Um, kids are frustrated. They're worried and they're having issues at home, being locked up. These things, it's, it's just like a, a, a ball going down the, the hill and it's picking up more and more steam and picking up more and more things. And mental health is one of them. Other... Uh, health issues. Um, I've, I've seen reports where they're saying that 40% of 40% of hospitals are reporting, excuse me, hospitals are reporting 40% decrease in stroke patients since this started. And clearly there's not that less stroke patients. Patients are afraid to go to the hospital because of the virus. So they're having their strokes at home they're not getting to the hospital in time. So something that could be managed and treated if it was on a timely basis are more severe or potentially fatal. Well, another issue is surgeries, elective surgeries. And in this study from the University of Birmingham in the UK, it says COVID-19 disruption will lead to 28 million surgeries canceled worldwide. And over 28 million elective surgeries across the globe could be canceled as a result of the COVID pandemic, leading to patients facing a lengthy wait for their health issues to be resolved, according to the study. The COVID Surge Collaborative has projected that based on a 12-week period of peak disruption to hospital services due to COVID-19, 28.4 million elective surgeries worldwide will be canceled or postponed in 2020. And the modeling study was published in the British Journal of Surgery. Um, researchers project that worldwide, 72.3% of planned surgeries would be canceled through the peak period of COVID-19 related disruption. Most canceled surgeries will be for non-cancer conditions, 
orthopedic procedures will be canceled most frequently with 6.3 million orthopedic surgeries canceled worldwide over a 12-week period. It also it is also projected that globally 2.3 million cancer surgeries will be canceled or postponed. Um, and it goes on to say, although essential, cancellations place a heavy burden on patients and society. Patients' conditions may deteriorate, worsening their quality of life as they wait for rescheduled surgery. In some cases, for example, cancer, delayed surgeries may lead to a number of unnecessary deaths. So there's another issue. And uh, there's a lot of indirect things happening here it's with the COVID pandemic and canceled surgeries, elective surgeries that are still very critical um, will be affecting millions and millions of people, according to that research. Another issue, and this is from World Vision, um, they call it the, the perfect storm. And it says millions more children at risk of violence under the lockdown and into the new normal. Uh, the COVID-19 poses a grave threat to the world's children. Uh, they talk about, in a previous report, that the mortality rate for healthy children infected with the virus has been lower than for adults and those with pre-existing conditions. 30 million are still at risk of illness and death. It is an indirect effect and impacts of this disease that pose a clear and present danger to children. Uh, particularly the most vulnerable, they write. So they look at violence, violence towards b girls and boys. And World Vision is predicting a major spike in the cases of children experiencing physical, emotional, and sexual violence, both now and in the months and years to come. Whether they are forced to stay at home or in time are sent to work or pushed into early marriage, boys and girls face a bleak future. Uh, unless governments and other agencies um, can do what they can to protect them. So they say some of the key findings of the report says up to 85 million more girls and boys worldwide may be exposed to physical, sexual, and or emotional violence over three months as a result of the quarantine. Uh, they believe that 13 million extra child marriages predicted uh, will occur in the years immediately following the crisis with at least 4 million more girls married in the next two years. Um, to slow the sp spread of COVID-19, 177 countries are implementing nationwide closures of schools, affecting over 73% of the world's student population. So there's a lot of children at home, in, in other words. While such quarantine arrangements are aimed at keeping children protected, uh, they sometimes can make them unsafe in other ways. Millions of children worldwide are at increased risk of, as I mentioned already, emotional, physical, and sexual violence at home. Scared and anxious about the threat of the virus and the resultant economic slowdown, some caregivers may lash out at those nearest to them. Existing anger and tension can be exacerbated by increased alcohol consumption. Um, and it goes on and on. Um, Children stuck at home are at increased risk from abusers, whether relatives or other community members, especially those who are already experiencing violence. Also, girls and boys who are already particularly vulnerable, including children with disabilities or those already living in poverty, economic distress, or fragile or conflict-affected context, will see their risk further exasperated by the lockdown. So... Yeah, so that's another big problem, and, and not totally surprising that uh, uh, an organization like World Vision is putting this out as they look out for the needs of children. And uh, let me go ahead and close with this. Okay, so in, in addition to mental health and different types of medical procedures and you know potential violence, horrible violence against children, it's the other diseases outside of COVID, infectious diseases, right? And we saw this during Ebola, right? When Ebola was ravaging West Africa, diarrheal diseases were being neglected. Malaria was being neglected as all um, efforts were being forced on taking care of the Ebola outbreak, very devastating outbreak. 
But this is from Doctors Without Borders, and they say, with global focus on COVID, the COVID pandemic, measles remains a silent killer in parts of Africa. Um, and, and we see that. And there's several countries that are experiencing large measles outbreaks in South, um, excuse me, in Africa. The DRC, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, we already saw that they had over 300,000 cases last year and maybe over 6,000 6, fatalities just from measles. And Chad and the Central African Republic are also experiencing pretty large measles outbreaks. Well, while Doctors Without Borders is responding to these this epidemic, um, there's issues that a lot of these children are not getting vaccinated because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And they talk about how they were fighting measles in the shadow of the Ebola outbreak, the current one that still actually exists. Um, while there's just a smattering of cases um, from Ebola, measles is still moving right along in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Um, and this is a couple of important uh, paragraphs. As in many remote places in DRC, local people know all too well the toll taken by silent killers such as measles, malaria, diarrhea, respiratory infections. The needs are huge, but the supply of medicines to health centers is problematic. The few medicines available in the health facilities do not cover the needs. Um, and it says every delay, every obstacle fuels the outbreak. And it says, in this already difficult context, the COVID-19 pandemic has created more barriers to vaccinating children against measles. Quote, implementing preventive measures to reduce the spread of COVID-19 is vital to protect communities and health workers, especially in a place like the DRC, where the health system is very limited. Unfortunately, these measures are having an impact on the overall measles response including transporting vaccines, assembling dedicated teams, and launching the vaccination campaigns. Every delay and every obstacle increases the risk of the epidemic continuing to spread, killing more children. And like I said, there was over 6,000 deaths from measles in the DRC last year. That was like at least double, if not more, of the deaths from Ebola in the same country. And lastly, COVID will sow the seeds of other health crises. And, we, and like I said, we saw that with Ebola 2014 to 2016. It says, today, with all eyes focused on the threat of COVID-19, Doctors Without Borders teams are continuing to respond to other health emergencies like measles in the DRC and elsewhere. As we adapt our approach to the coronavirus pandemic and support the response to it, it is important to remember that a one-track focus on COVID-19 will sow the seeds of other major health crises. Reducing vaccinations, nutrition support, or malaria prevention in the face of a public health crisis will lead to other crises, making the situation even worse. Neglecting the other health issues would make us complicit in many more future deaths. So yeah, yeah, that's it kind of goes without saying, right? Uh, COVID-19 is absorbing so many resources, so many people, so much time. But a lot of these places are battling infectious diseases on multiple fronts, like the DRC, right? The DRC battle, battles malaria, it battles Ebola, it battles measles in a major way, it's, it battles monkeypox, uh, cholera, I mean, name it. Th these countries are, are uh, inundated by a lot of infectious agents. So... I thought this article was really, really important, and it's just another indirect uh, effect of the COVID pandemic. Anyway, let me go ahead and close with that. I appreciate you watching. Comment below. I'd love to hear what you got to say. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Share it with your friends. That always helps the channel. And I'll see you next time on Outbreak News TV.